Dum 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 dum. On November 12th of 1870, the Topeka Ladies Library Association held its premier meeting. Topeka's first library was one bookcase in the back of a dry goods company in the 600 block of Kansas Avenue. Two years later, it was across the street over a hardware store. And two years after that, it moved to a second story walk up at 7th and Kansas, where it remained for eight years. But it was clear that the growing library needed a permanent home. Edward Wilder, treasurer of the Santa Fe Railway, became president of the library board in 1874. And when the library showed signs of outgrowing its 7th and Kansas location, he was in a position to do something about it. Wilder persuaded Santa Fe to donate $12,500 toward the construction of a library building on the state capitol grounds. History does not record exactly how he convinced the Union Pacific Railroad to match that donation, but he did, creating a building fund of $25,000. By the time it was completed in 1883, the building had cost a total of $44,000, nearly all of it raised through the efforts of one man, Edward Wilder. The ground floor accommodated books, while the second floor was a hall for public readings and cultural events. And this was the Topeka Free Public Library for many years. The David Mulvane home was given to the city of Topeka in 1933 to be used for library purposes. Six years later, the Mulvane Boys and Girls Library was formally opened. In 1943, as Topeka experienced a growth spurt, the library bought a house trailer, installed bookcases, and sent the first bookmobile into outlying neighborhoods. In the mid-1950s, children's and adult services came together in a new building at 10th and Washburn. By 1969, the building had reached the limits of its capacity and the first of a series of remodeling and expansion programs began. Today, the Topeka Public Library is a tax-supported institution under the supervision of a library director who is responsible to a board of trustees appointed by the mayor. The trustees determine the policies and goals of the library. There are over 350,000 books at the Topeka Public Library. But if you can't find the book, video, or audio cassette you need, the library has access to other public libraries and university libraries throughout the state. If the material is available from any one of these, the Topeka Public Library can borrow it for you through a special procedure called interlibrary loan. Looking for a particular magazine or newspaper? The Topeka Public Library subscribes to over 1,000 different publications. Back issues are available for your use. Newspapers are hard to keep as they turn brown and brittle and, over time, crumble away. For this reason, the Topeka Public Library has an extensive microfilm file, including every issue ever published of the Topeka Capital Journal. But that's only the beginning. Every day, the library's Community Information Service answers scores of questions about programs, services, and agencies in Topeka. The Business Center provides information about taxes, investments, job opportunities, and business addresses. While the Foundation Center has the state's most extensive collection of resource material relating to grants, loans, fundraising, and proposal writing. The Topeka Public Library's collection of audio cassettes and compact discs covers a wide range of music and the spoken word, from country to classical, rock to rhythm, foreign language courses to film scores. Take them home or play them at one of the library's listening stations. There are videos, too, 
In addition to popular movies, you can check out a video on cooking or cake decorating, home repair, child care. Well, the choices are virtually endless. Do you know that you can check out small sculptures and art replicas at the Topeka Public Library? It's true. There are over 500 framed art reproductions you can check out and take home to hang on your walls. And there's always an exhibit in the Gallery of Fine Arts. The Topeka Public Library became the first gallery in the city to house a permanent art collection, beginning in 1902, with a collection of Art Nouveau glass and ceramic items donated by Edward Wilder. Over the years since, the library's permanent art collection has grown through gifts and donations. In 1991, Topekans Cotter and Jean Hirschberg donated a magnificent collection of African art, which includes large pieces like these tribal dance masks and carved wooden figures, as well as these tiny bronze sculptures used as scale weights by the Akan people of Ghana to weigh gold dust. The Music for a Sunday Afternoon Concert Series presents fine performances that range from classical to contemporary by regional and guest artists. Thanks to the generosity of Robert and Hazel Lingo, the Children's Services area is a magical kingdom, replete with thousands of books, hundreds of audio and videotapes, compact discs, and magazines. In this wondrous environment, children are introduced to the best in literature for young people. There are computers here, too, with educational and recreational software geared to even the youngest preschooler. Bookaroo, the Topeka Public Library mascot, visits the children in the library and makes guest appearances all over the city to encourage the reading and enjoyment of books.